This story is titled, My Mom Chose My Cheating Wife Over Me. Now She's Hoping to Reconnect. So, this all started on what was supposed to be just a regular weeknight. We both had long days at work, nothing special or crazy, so we kept the evening pretty simple. I made us dinner, something quick and easy. Then we ate while half watching a show we'd seen a million times. It was one of those chill evenings where I figured we'd both just unwind together. Nothing was out of the ordinary, or so I thought. After dinner, she told me she was going to head up to the bedroom to catch up on her favorite show. I didn't think much of it. This was our routine sometimes. She'd watch her show in bed, and I'd kick back in the living room, catch up on a game or whatever else was on. It seemed like the perfect way to relax after a long day. Anyway, I was minding my own business on the couch when, after a while, I started thinking, hey, maybe I'll go join her. So, I got up, cleaned up a bit, and then headed upstairs. As I got closer to the bedroom door, I heard her talking. At first, I figured she was probably on the phone with one of her friends or maybe her mom. No big deal, right? But as I got closer, the conversation started to sound off. It wasn't just any regular chat. There was something weird about it. This kind of lightness in her tone, like a laugh that sounded more flirty. It caught me completely off guard. I don't think I'd ever heard her talk to anyone else like that since we started dating, let alone now that we were married. I stopped in my tracks, just listening. I couldn't catch all of it, but there was enough to make my stomach twist. She was giggling at something the other person said, and it wasn't just a regular laugh. It was that kind of laugh you give when you're really into someone, that I want you to keep talking kind of laugh. I was rooted there, feeling like an idiot, but also feeling like I had to know what was going on. Every instinct I had was screaming that something was off. Then she wrapped up the call. She said a quick goodbye in this soft, almost shy tone. I tried to play it cool, like I just happened to be walking by. I walked into the bedroom trying to keep my face as normal as possible and asked, Who was that? Her face flickered for just a second, just the smallest hesitation, and then she said, Oh, just an old friend from work. She said it like it was nothing but there was something too casual about the way she said it, like she'd practice that line or something. I felt this creeping doubt in the back of my mind, but I didn't want to seem paranoid. I just nodded, made a nonchalant comment about her old friend, and left it at that. But that feeling didn't go away. In fact, it got worse as the night went on. She seemed... different. I don't know how else to explain it. I was noticing all these little things, like how she kept checking her phone when she thought I wasn't looking, or how she'd laugh to herself like she was reading something funny but wouldn't say what it was. I tried telling myself I was imagining things, that I was reading too much into a simple phone call, but it was eating at me. Later that night, she went to take a shower. She left her phone on the bed, and normally, I'd never even think to touch it. But this time, I just couldn't help myself. I picked it up, my hands practically shaking. The screen was still on, showing a message from someone named Dan. My heart was pounding as I unlocked the phone. She'd given me her passcode ages ago, so no sneaky stuff there. And there it was, messages from this guy filled with flirty banter and jokes that felt way too familiar. They weren't explicit, but it was enough to tell me this wasn't just some old friend. My eyes zeroed in on one line that made everything click. Last time was amazing. I can't stop thinking about it. Last time? What last time? I didn't even know what to do at that point. My whole body felt numb, like I was floating or something, reading that over and over. This wasn't a casual chat. This was her being secretive, talking about things she didn't want me to know about. I was just frozen there, reading and rereading, feeling everything inside me twist and churn. After a few minutes, I heard the water shut off. I quickly put her phone back where I'd found it and tried to act normal, like I hadn't just had my entire world flipped upside down, but everything felt different now. I felt like I was seeing her in a whole new light, and it wasn't a good one. My mind was racing, and all I could think was, how long has this been going on? How did I not see it? She came back into the room, all casual, like nothing had happened, and climbed into bed. I pretended to be busy with something on my phone, just trying to keep my face in check. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't. I was lying there, just inches away from her, feeling more distant than I'd ever felt in my life. It felt like I didn't even know the person next to me anymore. And the worst part? I had no idea what to do. Should I confront her right then? Wait? 
play it cool and try to get more proof? My mind was a mess, and I couldn't think straight. All I knew was that this wasn't just some misunderstanding. This was something real, something that had already started pulling us apart. After that night, everything felt different. I couldn't get those messages out of my head. Every time I looked at her, I saw those words from Dan, like they were burned into my brain. I spent a couple of days just mulling it over, trying to figure out what I'd say or how I'd even bring it up. I felt like a total fool, questioning everything we had and wondering if I'd missed signs all along. But one thing was clear. I couldn't just sit with this. I had to confront her. So, a couple of nights later, after dinner, I sat her down. I went straight to the point and asked her, Are you seeing someone else? She looked completely taken aback, like the thought of her ever doing something like that was impossible. But the moment of shock quickly faded, and her face shifted into something else, something I couldn't quite read. That's when she started crying, like, immediately. I didn't even get another word in before the tears started pouring. She started with the usual lines, blaming stress at work, saying she was feeling overwhelmed, and that Dan was just a friend who'd been there to listen. She threw out every excuse you could think of, work pressures, her mental health, even some stuff about feeling unappreciated in our marriage. It was like she'd prepared a list of every possible reason she could give, hoping one of them would be enough for me to drop it. I just sat there, letting her talk, waiting for the part where she'd admit to what I already knew. But she just kept going in circles, denying that anything physical happened. She claimed it was just emotional support, and that it got a little out of hand. I felt like I was watching someone I didn't even recognize, hearing her desperately trying to turn it around like it was somehow my fault for not giving her enough attention. She didn't even apologize in a real way, just excuses on top of excuses. Finally, I told her that I couldn't live with someone who'd been hiding things from me like this, and I wanted a divorce. It was like the moment I said that, her entire demeanor changed. The tears stopped instantly, and suddenly she was all calm and composed, saying things like, Do you really want to throw everything away over one mistake? She tried to make me feel like I was overreacting, like what I'd found was no big deal and I was just being unreasonable, but I wasn't budging. This wasn't something I could just get over. That night, I needed someone to talk to, someone who'd understand, or at least have my back. So I called my mom. She and I had always been close, and I thought she'd be furious on my behalf. I thought she'd tell me I was right, that I deserved better. I needed to hear that honestly because I was barely holding it together, but what actually happened just, I don't know, it blindsided me. When I told her everything, expecting her to be on my side, she surprised me with a reaction that I never would have guessed. She wasn't angry, disappointed, or even sad. She seemed weirdly calm, almost casual, like I'd just told her about some minor issue at work or something. And then she hit me with, maybe you're overreacting. She made a mistake, but you two can work it out. My jaw practically hit the floor. I couldn't believe it. My own mom, who I thought would be furious for me, was acting like I was being unreasonable. She kept going on about how nobody's perfect and how everyone deserves a second chance. I tried to tell her more, to make her see just how betrayed I felt, but she wouldn't even hear it. She just kept saying things like, marriage isn't easy, you know that, and you two have built a life together. Don't throw it all away over one bad decision. I was sitting there, listening to my own mother's side with my wife, and it felt like someone had pulled the rug out from under me. I'd come to her for comfort, for understanding, and instead, I felt like I was the one getting scolded. She made it sound like I was some impulsive kid who didn't understand that relationships take work, but I wasn't the one who'd messed up here. She was, and the more my mom talked, the more I started to realize just how close she'd gotten to my wife over the years. I guess I'd always known they were close, but in that moment, it felt like they were closer than I was with my own mom. She was acting like losing my wife would be a bigger deal to her than supporting her own son. It was this weird, sick feeling, like I'd lost both of them at the same time. I tried to explain that it wasn't just one mistake, that this had broken something in me that I didn't think could be fixed. But my mom just shook her head, saying things like, You're just hurt right now. Once you calm down, you'll see things differently. She genuinely believed that I could just sit with it for a while, and somehow be okay. After a while, I couldn't listen to it anymore. 
I was drained, emotionally exhausted, and I realized that I wasn't going to get any support from her. So I told her I had to go and hung up. I sat there in silence for a long time, just trying to process everything. It felt like the entire world had flipped upside down, and I was the only one who didn't know which way was up. Here I was, dealing with this huge betrayal, and the one person I thought would understand basically told me to suck it up and deal with it. I felt completely alone, like no one was in my corner. My wife had betrayed me, and now my mom was acting like I was the problem for wanting to walk away. After that call with my mom, I was more lost than ever. She convinced me to stay in the house a little longer, just to think things over. She said I was acting rash, that I needed to let the dust settle. I don't know why I listened to her. I guess part of me thought that if I stayed, maybe I'd start seeing things the way she did, that maybe I was overreacting and just needed time to calm down. But staying in that house didn't help. It only made everything worse. The trust between my wife and me was gone, and I couldn't just pretend everything was fine. I moved my stuff into the spare room, set up a little makeshift bedroom there, and basically started living as her roommate instead of her husband. She tried to act like nothing had changed, like this was just a rough patch we could work through, but I could see her frustration every time I brushed her off or avoided her attempts to talk. The first few nights were the worst. She'd knock on the door, asking if we could talk, asking if I'd come back to bed. I could hear her sniffling through the door, and I knew she was crying, but I just couldn't bring myself to open it. I felt like I had to keep that barrier up. Every time she'd knock, it just reminded me of the messages I'd read and the way she'd lied to my face. It was too painful, too raw, to even look at her without feeling all of that hurt bubbling up again. After a few nights, she started to get frustrated. The crying turned into her just standing outside the door, practically begging me to talk to her. We can fix this, please, just talk to me, she'd say. But I couldn't bring myself to open that door. I wasn't ready to have that conversation. And honestly, I didn't know if I'd ever be ready. I was trying to process everything. And every time she tried to push, it only made things harder. And then my mom started getting more involved. I don't know if my wife reached out to her or if my mom just decided to insert herself into the situation, but she started showing up at the house unannounced. At first, it was under the guise of checking in on me, but it quickly became clear she was there to mediate. She'd sit us both down like we were kids being scolded and try to talk things out between us. One day, I remember she came over and just launched into this whole speech about forgiveness and not throwing away years of memories. She kept saying things like, you're overreacting, and marriage isn't easy, you know that. Every word felt like a jab, like she was siding with my wife and acting like I was just being stubborn. It was so strange, sitting there and listening to my own mom tell me that I needed to be more understanding and that I should give my wife a second chance. Meanwhile, my wife was sitting there, all teary-eyed, nodding along like she was the one who'd been hurt. I tried to explain to my mom that it wasn't just about forgiving one mistake, that this wasn't something I could just get over, but she just brushed it off saying, you're too emotional right now. Once you've calmed down, you'll see things more clearly. She was treating me like a kid who'd had a tantrum, and I felt like I was being completely dismissed. It felt like she didn't understand me at all, or maybe she just didn't want to. As the days went by, the atmosphere in the house turned ice cold. My wife and I barely spoke, and when we did, it was tense and awkward. She'd try to talk about normal stuff, like asking what we should have for dinner or how my day was, but I couldn't even look at her without feeling all of that hurt and anger bubbling up again. I could see the frustration building in her too, like she was getting tired of trying to get me to forgive and forget, but I wasn't ready to just move past it like nothing had happened. My mom kept coming over too, always with some new pep talk about how I needed to give it time, or remember the good times. It was exhausting. I was starting to feel like the bad guy, like I was the one breaking the family apart. My mom would say things like, she's hurting too, you know, and do you really want to end this over one mistake? It felt like every time I talked to her, she was pushing me further and further away from my own feelings, like my hurt and betrayal didn't matter. One night, my wife tried to bring up the messages again, saying it wasn't what it looked like, and that she only needed emotional support. I snapped. I told her to stop lying to me, to stop acting like this was just a misunderstanding. 
I told her I'd seen the messages, that I knew it was more than just emotional support. The look on her face told me everything. I don't think she expected me to confront her that way. After that, things got even colder. We'd pass each other in the hallway without a word, eat meals in separate rooms, and basically live completely separate lives under the same roof. It felt like we were strangers, people who happened to share the same address but had nothing else in common. I couldn't believe that this was the person I'd once loved so deeply, and now we were just existing side by side with this huge wall between us. My mom didn't make things easier. She came over more often, still trying to fix things, still acting like I was the unreasonable one. She'd say things like, you're going to regret this when you're older, or you're throwing away something special. But it didn't feel special anymore. It felt broken, beyond repair. And every time she pushed me to give her another chance, it only made me feel more alone, like no one was really on my side. Eventually, I decided enough was enough. I couldn't keep living like this, constantly feeling like I was the bad guy for not wanting to be lied to, for not wanting to live with someone who'd betrayed me. I was done playing along with this cold war in my own home. I told my wife that I was moving out and that I needed space to figure things out. I expected her to be upset, maybe even angry, but all she did was nod. It was like she'd finally given up on trying to make me stay. And of course, my mom wasn't happy about my decision. She called me up furious, saying I was running away and that I was making a mistake. She even showed up at the house one last time, trying to talk me out of it, but I was done. I couldn't keep pretending everything was okay, and I couldn't keep letting my mom tell me how I should feel. I packed up what I needed, threw my stuff in the car, and drove off. The second I stepped outside, I felt this strange mix of relief and heartbreak. It was like a weight had lifted off my shoulders, but at the same time, I felt completely lost. I didn't have a plan. I was just running. My friend had offered me a place to stay for a while, so I drove over to his place, hoping I could at least get a few nights of decent sleep without that constant reminder of betrayal hanging over me. My friend welcomed me in without any questions, just handed me a spare key and told me to make myself at home. He knew what I was going through, and he didn't push for details. It was exactly what I needed. Someone who didn't try to tell me how I should feel, someone who just let me process everything in my own way. For the first time in weeks, I felt like I could breathe, but the peace didn't last long. The day after I left, my mom started blowing up my phone. She must have found out pretty quickly, maybe from my wife or maybe just from coming over unannounced like she'd been doing. I ignored her calls at first, but eventually I figured I'd have to face her, so I picked up. The conversation was exactly what I'd expected. Her telling me I was making a huge mistake, that I was being selfish, and that I needed to go back home and work things out. I tried to explain that I couldn't live in that house anymore, that every day felt like torture, but she wouldn't hear it. She kept saying things like, you're throwing away something special, and you'll regret this when you're older. It was like she was completely blind to how hurt I was. Every word out of her mouth made me feel like I was the villain, like I was the one who'd done something wrong. It hurt, but I knew I couldn't let her guilt me into going back. Then she hit me with something that really threw me off. She told me she was planning to go over to the house and check on my wife to make sure she was okay. I couldn't believe it. Here I was, her own son, barely holding it together, and she was more worried about the woman who'd lied and betrayed me than she was about me. It felt like a slap in the face. I tried to tell her that I needed her support, that this wasn't the time to be playing peacekeeper, but she just kept insisting that my wife needed someone right now. That was when I realized that, in my mom's eyes, my wife was practically her own daughter. She wasn't just losing a daughter-in-law. She was losing a relationship she'd cherished, one she'd somehow put above her own son's pain. That stung more than anything. It felt like I was losing my family one piece at a time. I told her I couldn't talk to her right now and hung up. For the next few days, I tried to settle into some kind of routine at my friend's place. I got up early, went to work, kept myself busy, but there was this constant ache in the back of my mind. Every time my phone buzzed, I'd tense up, worried it'd be another guilt trip message from my mom or a desperate text from my wife. I knew I'd have to face them eventually, but right then, I was just trying to survive one day at a time. A few times, I'd catch myself staring at my phone, half expecting my mom to have some change of heart, to call me and say she understood why I left. 
that she was sorry for pushing me, but those calls never came. Instead, I'd get messages from her asking when I was coming back, telling me that my wife was distraught and needed support. Each one of those texts felt like a fresh wound, a reminder that the people who were supposed to be there for me were instead pulling me in the opposite direction. I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a part of me that thought about going back, just to make things easier, to stop the constant guilt tripping. But I knew if I went back, I'd never be able to look at my wife or my mom the same way. I'd always be wondering if there was something else. If my wife had lied to me about other things. If my mom had always put her needs above mine. Leaving was the hardest thing I'd ever done, but staying would have been even harder. I knew that now. This wasn't just a rough patch like my mom kept saying. This was the end of something I'd once thought would last forever. And while I wasn't sure what the future held, I knew one thing for certain. I was done living a lie. I thought I'd finally moved on, or at least as close as I could get to moving on. I'd been out of the house for months, had my own space, and was well into the divorce process. I kept things as peaceful as possible. No big fights, no over-the-top confrontations. I just wanted a clean break. And for a while, it seemed like I was getting that. My wife and I were barely in contact, just the occasional text to confirm details or check in on the divorce proceedings. My mom, on the other hand, let's just say she didn't make things easy. After I left, my mom started acting like she'd lost a daughter instead of me, her actual son. She practically moved in with my wife, showing up with groceries, making dinners, and even inviting her over to family events. It was like she'd officially chosen sides, and her side wasn't mine. Every so often, she'd call me, always with the same speech. You're throwing away a beautiful marriage, or it was just a mistake, you should try to forgive her. I learned to tune it out, keeping the calls short and to the point. Then one day, everything changed. I was at work when I got a call from my dad. We don't talk much. He mostly lets my mom handle the family drama. But this time, he sounded serious. He told me my mom had taken a bad fall and was in the hospital. She was okay, but bruised up, and she wanted to see me. At first, I wasn't sure if I'd go. Part of me felt like I'd been pushed away by her so much these past months that showing up now wouldn't make a difference. But another part of me felt obligated. She was my mom, after all. So, I took off work and drove to the hospital. Walking into that hospital room was surreal. Seeing her lying there, looking so small and fragile, made me realize I hadn't seen her in person since I'd left my house. She looked older than I remembered, tired and worn down, and part of me felt a wave of guilt. I thought maybe this was her reaching out, maybe she wanted to patch things up and understand where I was coming from. I hoped for just a second that this would be a turning point. I sat down by her bed, and we exchanged the usual, are you okay, and how did this happen stuff. I asked about her injuries, how long she'd be there, and tried to keep things light. But as soon as the small talk was over, she gave me this look, a look I recognized right away. It was the same look she'd given me when I told her about my wife's betrayal, like she was disappointed in me, like she couldn't believe her son would be so heartless. Then she sighed and went right into it. She's been so lost without you. My stomach dropped. I hadn't even been in the room five minutes, and she was already talking about my soon-to-be ex-wife. I tried to stay calm, but hearing that made my blood boil. Here I was, coming to see her in a vulnerable moment, expecting maybe a conversation that would focus on us for once, and instead, she was pulling the same guilt trip she'd been on since the beginning. I clenched my fists, trying to keep my face neutral. I didn't want to start an argument, especially not there, but I couldn't believe she was doing this again. She went on, saying things like, She's been so lost and lonely, and you have to understand, she's just made a mistake. It was as if she hadn't heard a single thing I'd said over the past few months, as if all my pain, all my frustration didn't matter. I cut her off. Mom, we've been over this, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. I'm not going back. What she did broke something in me, and I can't just pretend it didn't happen. I thought maybe that would get through to her. But no. She just shook her head and gave me this pitying look. She's like a daughter to me, she said quietly, looking down at her hands. She's family, Michael. You can't just throw family away because of one mistake. That was it. 
hearing her call my wife family while treating me like some stubborn kid who wouldn't forgive a minor slip-up, it was too much. Mom, she's not your daughter. I am. I tried to say it calmly, but my voice came out harsher than I'd intended. I felt a rush of anger mixed with sadness, all the months of betrayal and loneliness bubbling up to the surface. You're acting like you care more about her feelings than mine. I came here to see you, not to get guilt-tripped about my own decision. She looked up at me, a little shocked, maybe, that I'd finally said something. But then she just sighed and shook her head. I just don't want you to make a mistake you'll regret for the rest of your life, she said, as if that explained everything. Like she truly believed that going back to a broken marriage would somehow fix everything. I took a deep breath, trying to hold back everything I wanted to say. I could feel my dad watching from the corner of the room, probably wondering if he should step in, but he stayed quiet. I looked back at my mom, and I realized that she was never going to see things from my perspective. She had this image in her head of my marriage, of my wife, and of what she thought was best for me, and nothing I could say would ever change that. Look, I hope you get better soon, Mom, I said, standing up. I could feel the weight of her disappointment, but I wasn't about to keep sitting there feeling like the villain in my own story. But I'm not going back, not to her. I have to move forward, whether you agree with it or not. I turned and walked toward the door. I could hear her call after me, saying something about rebuilding and forgiveness. But I just kept walking. I didn't turn around, didn't say anything else. I was done. I'd tried so hard to explain, to make her understand, but it was clear that she'd made her choice, and it wasn't me. So I decided to cut her off for good. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for cutting my mom off? Edit 1. Some of you are asking if my cheated physically. Well, I am not sure 100%, but I think she did. Edit 2. There is some comment saying that my mom is a cheater. That is why she is protecting my wife, but I don't think she is.